Uh, okay, hi everybody. Today is Wednesday, May 1st. Happy May Day, right? Um, so you, uh, you are at the WGE Kate's Infra meeting. Um, you are being recorded. You can all go watch yourselves later on a public YouTube channel as you adhere to the Kubernetes Code of Conduct by not being jerks. Um, first off, is there anybody new here? I feel like I recognize all the faces and names. Okay, uh, next up, let's talk about billing. What, uh, what has changed since last time? Uh, I can probably take this. Why don't you start and I'll get the, the dollar by dollar readout and we'll yeah. see. If yeah, why don't, okay, so I actually did, I started using Data Studio. I'm gonna to try to present my beautiful presentation for everyone. I, I prepared a PowerPoint for everyone's enjoyment. Awesome. Um, bring it up. Let's see if this works. You heard it here, he prepared a PowerPoint. Exactly. <laughs> it is indeed a PowerPoint, as you shall shortly see. How do I present? <laughs> this is exactly like PowerPoint, I don't know where anything is. Uh, is that too harsh, sorry. <laughs> um, all right, how do I do present? I guess. Uh, are you using the client or the web view? I, I only know how to do it with the client. I'm gonna try to share. Uh, oh goodness. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, while Justin is looking, I wanted us to try and go through some of our usual, oh, there's even Comic Sans in there. Uh, I wanted us to go through our usual spiel, uh, but then I wanted us to kind of go through things on a GitHub issue driven basis. So I tried to call up all of our action items into GitHub issues. I think Justin's jumping the gun on one of his, but I'm so excited to see Comic Sans in serious business. So let's see our billing report. So we actually, yeah, despite the comic sounds, this is Google Data Studio, which is actually really sweet, I think. So it actually gets, it's fairly easy to build uh, reports. Um, and you know, you can, it does pretty nice drill down and all this. I have it, you can change the date range if you're in the, the view, you can drill down into the different services. Uh, so like you can then drill down further. This is live data, so we can kind of, I'm, I'm a little concerned that the data doesn't exactly match what we're seeing elsewhere, but so there might be some reconciliation needed, but we can basically create whatever billing reports we want. Um, I believe I can embed this into a web page, uh, or we can, we're getting it delivered via email, a PDF delivered by email each day. I don't know whether we can put this somewhere else. We can make the data public. I don't know whether there's any PII in there. So Tim asked for a couple of reports, and so we have some drill downs. The actual data itself isn't, I would say, terribly interesting right now. We don't have a ton of uh, a ton of data in there, but you know, you can see that we're spending 21% more on Compute Engine. Uh, it's a little awkward that it's May 1st, but uh, I guess we spent 21% more on on Compute Engine in April than we did in May. So yeah. We did. And, and 13 bajillion percent more on cloud storage in GCR prod. But still zero. But still zero. <laughs> I tried to get that to not appear and uh, failed, but yeah. So we can basically create whatever reports we want. It's fairly easy to create. Uh, and it's a fairly nice interface over BigQuery, which uh, has all our billing data being exported to it. And we can figure out then where we want this data to go. Do we want to make BigQuery public? Do we want to just put the PDFs somewhere? Basically, whatever we want and I will change it from Comic Sans. Okay, um, so there's an umbrella issue out there. You don't ever change it from Comic Sans. Uh, <laughs> there's an umbrella issue out there that talks about our desires for uh, billing. And I think the two areas we had talked about were we wanna be able to do billing by namespace once we get to clusters. Uh, and we want to be able to do billing based on storage possibly if we live in a world where every sig wants us to store all of their artifacts do we know like which sigs and which sub projects are going to be costing us more money there um, that's true so we don't yet have namespace billing breakdowns i don't know if yeah. we have anything coming on that front we, I, we do i don't know if that will go to bigquery uh, we can talk to the team here and get that integration but we should definitely do namespace by namespace breakdowns for clusters and figure out how to integrate that but even that aside, like getting the, the three or four queries that we really want to have answered here and having us have confidence in the data uh, would be awesome. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, I, we should have been able to, once we have buckets, and I, I believe we'll get per bucket breakdown, I need to confirm that, but um, yeah, we can, it, we can also just, whatever data we can get into BigQuery, we can easily aggregate and query in this relatively nice uh, data studio thing. <clears throat> Is it worth still doing the readout from the uh, the traditional? Yeah, because it's different. So it'll be interesting to see how different it is. So I loaded up for just the last two weeks since we since we met last, uh, and our top billable item is VMs, eighty eighty five dollars. Uh, what what do you have a date range? I'm sorry, Tim. Is that what are the actual dates? Uh, four seventeen to four thirty. Ooh, comparing it live. Oh, it's not accurate. <laughs> oh, maybe it is because maybe you said 75? I have eight. So the, this building breakdown breaks it down by SKU. Hold on, let me break it down by product. Well, we've breaks them. I have a SKU breakdown on that, which I'm sharing. Product. You have it by SKU? Oh, I can't see both screens at the same time. Oh, yeah, you do have it by SKU. Let me break it down by SKU then. So I have $85 in cores, $42 in memory and $31 in SSD PD. Who's using SSD? Who's getting all fancy? I think we're all using SSD. SSD PD? Yeah, I hope so. We should be using standard PD. Okay, we can talk about that later. <laughs> okay, so there's obviously some reconciliation needed between the numbers that are coming out of the billing reports, but uh, I, will, I will make those numbers match. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out that. I can't see the white on the yellow. 3182, that matches. It does? No, 3173. Oh, well, so close enough. enough. I mean, that's close enough. <laughs> Uh, That's like time zone. Yeah, so we can uh, we can work on reconciling this. Sir. What do you have for DNS? Do you have DNS in there? Uh, not on GC. I can switch to DNS. I have twenty dollars and seventy one cents. Okay, I have nineteen dollars and eighty nine cents. Okay, so we're very close. Yep. I think there's some differences in time. Sure. I'm gonna guess it's time because like the 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 all the reports come in for a time range, and okay. I, it went by like starting time. So, <clears throat> uh, part of the reason I care so much about billing is I feel like it's one of the critical things before we open up the floodgates. Totally agree yes. with you. The question is, what do I mean by when, it, when is it done? When are we ready to open up the floodgates? I, I think we need broad parity of numbers, not exact matches, but like to within, within 1% or 2%. Uh, I think we need to make sure that we have the reports we want. In other words, like if you want not, if you want buckets, we need that, and if we want namespaces, we need that. And we should be able to sit in this meeting, and instead of me pulling up the, the billing report, we should just be able to look at this and yes. and be confident that what we're seeing is reality. And we can also we can actually just add this. I have an idea. We could create a Google group, and we can post from the PDF to the Google group, and then anyone that wants to subscribe can join that group. And anyone that doesn't want to subscribe can not join that group and, and get the PDFs daily. Yeah. Okay. Or whatever interval. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then the archives as well, which is nice. Yeah. So then you can just go and look. We don't have to bother about setting up another bucket. And They're storing the buckets into the buckets. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, the daily reports to a Google group to me almost sounds like a nice to have. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I will make sure I turn that into an issue. But in terms of what we want to accomplish by next meeting, uh, can we get an answer on uh, something billing per bucket and billing per namespace. Uh, we can certainly do billing per bucket. We can get answers for billing per bucket since we activated that yesterday afternoon. Uh, and um, per namespace, we can maybe look at. We can find out more information on that. Yeah, I, I want to be realistic here. Two weeks from Friday, I leave for KubeCon. So, like in the next two weeks, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot else. Like very honestly, uh, so I'm wary of overcommitting for two weeks from today. Right, I I understand. Um, I am also leaving for KubeCon in a little over two weeks. Um, <laughs> hooray! So it would be really great to kind of have as much like be be really close to saying we're ready to open the gates. Um, so I mean, open the gates. We have like eight different things that we can open the gates for. We can open the gates for GCS serving without a whole lot of fanfare. We can open the gates for GCR serving, but we need to move over the bulk of the existing GCR stuff. Um, I don't know if Linus is here today. I, I, I can't see. Well, so I, I think we're, we're jumping way, uh, way ahead on that, but okay. Because I want to come back to like, what can we open the gates for? 
Uh, but so we'll get, go ahead. Th that's exactly my point. It's like, there's eight things that we can open eight gates for. Okay. What, what do you care most about? The, I, I assume what you care most about is the cluster and the workloads. I, I honestly just want us to have the ability to adapt if for whatever reason our costs explode and eventually be able to um, break it down by service and whatnot. Ah. So it's easy for us to keep track of, whoa, our numbers changed drastically since the last time we read them out. What have we done in the last two weeks? And then adjust that accordingly. Sure. So I think we're, we're on the hairy edge of that already with this report. If we just like polished it up a little bit, uh, we've got most of the queries that we're actually interested in. And, and honestly, if people have queries that they'd like to see, like send them to Justin or myself and we'll figure it out. Um, I don't want to have 800 queries in here. I would rather have like six. So, um, you know, I would focus on the last month, the last two weeks. The month on month growth is I think. The and then month on month. month. Right. And it, one with the 13 bajillion percent, which is a little annoying, but that one is the one which is the most interesting, like which one is changing. Right. Um, and then, and that gives us an overall picture. And then I think we can, we can quote, quote, open the gates. Um, but that said, the other pieces aren't all in place yet. Like we can't open the gates on GCR until we do the bulk conversion of all the existing GCR data. We can't open the gates on workloads until we're comfortable that the cluster automation is done, which I would like to have done for today, but just fell between too many cracks. Caps. Right. Uh, okay. So let's move on to some of the other AIs. Cause I think you just, you talked about one of them. Um, uh, uh, oh, Hippie has gone ahead and done that. So setting up, uh, God, sorry, this is, I'm not doing a great job here. Okay, before we get to AIs, we also said something about reviewing what has changed in the last two weeks from an audit perspective. Hippie, it looks like you added some things here. Sure, um, later on, we're gonna look at setting up an automated job for this so that the moment that it changes, we have a PR to review um, or within a, you know, a few hours or a day. Um, this is the only changes since our last meeting. Um, somebody added the Kate's Infrared GCP accounting Google group and they added the role big query job user. It would be nice to um, automatically figure out who changed that um, and add it to the audit. Um, but that's the, that's the audit review for now. There's a link to the, to the commit that has the updated data. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, is the audit log queryable in the same way? The, the, we can export the audit log to BigQuery. Okay. It seems like it could be a follow-up. Like simply having the, the readout and actually hit me if you run it again, we, 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 yeah, we put in a, a we, something for you to find. We, we, we left you a breadcrumb. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if you were going to run it just before the meeting or if it was going to take longer. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, the, simply the fact that we have an alert that simply says, hey, somebody added so-and-so with this permission like, do you want to codify this into YAML or not uh, is huge. It's a huge deal. Uh, so right now it's running manually, right? Um, we can run it periodically once we have a cluster up. Looking forward to that. We have a cluster up. Yes, once well, you're happy with it. Once I'm happy with the cluster. Okay. Uh, so I think that was actually one of the AIs. So we don't, that is still blocked on actually having a cluster up that we're happy with. Okay. Yes. So um, that is my next, I don't know if you're going to jump to that as an AI, but like that's my next uh, mission. Uh, I'm happy now with the way all the GCR stuff is and all the GCS stuff seems to be up. And we'll talk more about that, I guess, when we get to that topic. Um, yeah. My next real thing that I want to focus on for this group is getting that cluster and the automation and all the config set up the way we're happy with it. Again, I probably won't be two weeks from today. It probably will be four weeks from today. Okay. We'll, we'll find out, but. Okay. Um, Dims, you had an action item to uh, update our charter uh, to put in some language about requirements for spending money on six. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to wait for a week to see if anybody had any, uh, any more thoughts on that. Otherwise, I'll take the language there and update the charter and I'll push a PR out today. Sounds good. I, I rewatched our last meeting and it sounded like we kind of came to consensus there. I dropped in a couple things we wanted to clarify in the issue that was assigned to you. Okay, thank you. Um, and then 
we were supposed to have a demo today of the use of the container image promoter. Yeah, I think Linus is not well. Uh, He's yeah. taken a couple of days off, so. That's cool. Um, I don't, and we, we missed, we also had something about maybe doing uh, SIG, uh, doing a demo at SIG release. Uh, we missed the vote on that last week, again, for reasons. Right. Uh, to be fair, uh, Linus, towards the end of the last week, he had pinged a few people uh, asking for somebody to try it out, and nobody has right. stepped up yet. So that's, I don't know whether that's good or bad. <laughs> Yeah, he thinks it is it is basically done. Um, yes. Okay, so I will share my screen now if I can. And what I wanted to try and do, uh, I had an AI to sort of like formalize uh, how we're planning this stuff uh, because I feel like each meeting that we run, it's kind of a slipshod scraping through the doc and trying to figure out what we were talking about last time. So what I've done is made four milestones. I've given them just arbitrary due dates uh, to talk about what I think we had been doing in the group's inception was proof of concept, making sure we knew how to stand things up manually. What we are trying to work on now are all of the tasks necessary for us to uh, say we are ready to open the gates. Uh, and then I feel like the next two milestones are around migrating low risk infrastructure and migrating all the infrastructure related to Kubernetes tests. Um, Cause I feel like the Kubernetes test stuff is kind of tangled up. Um, so uh, I felt like what might be most productive is to get this group's consensus on whether or not I have the right things in the ready to migrate milestone, um, whether they are assigned to the right people and like kick things out that don't belong here or add things in that, that do belong here. Um, so, uh, I also have tried to use area labels to break the work down into some big areas to allude to Tim's comment about like eight different gates. Um, I feel like we can chart things up by, you know what, I'll do, I'll do a different view where I can actually filter this stuff while I'm talking. Uh, but to filter things by, uh, access to the cluster. So like, can we actually describe all of the Google groups that we're using? Do we feel like we have a mechanism to manage all the Google groups that we're using? Do we know what IAM roles and policies these things are associated with? Uh, that, that sort of stuff. Um, uh, like the question I had here was, uh, do we want to move stuff to the G Suite account uh, instead of uh, public Google groups? Right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how we can automate or really get any sort of visibility into groups and what we're doing with groups without using the G Suite and the API stuff. Okay, so I will uh, ask Steering uh, for uh, help. So, so I feel like we got that. Um, I actually just made sure I knew how to log into the G Suite. Uh, I, I kind of needed to recover my password. That's all done now. I'm good. What I need is somebody who's actually willing to do the work of like integrating with G Suite's thing. So if it's oh, well, uh, cool. I will sign up for moving the public ones uh, that we have set up for uh, all the images. I can move that first um, and so, then well, work well, with yeah. Christoph probably. Yeah, but before we do that, I, we should, I, I would like to understand how the API works. I think Christoph mentioned some, there was a bug that was assigned to Christoph to figure out the API and how to do it through the API. I feel like we should probably actually write a program for ourselves, either a CLI or, or something that can actuate Google Groups the way we do for other stuff right now. Um, so that we have a like a simple command that's create a new group that initializes it with all the correct owners. Um, although Dim's yours is a pain in the butt because you have it set for don't auto add me. Uh, and so we always have to invite you and then wait and then promote you. Um, but uh, just saying. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't know where to do that, so. <laughs> so I don't know, uh, actually I have no idea how you disabled yeah, that. Yeah, how did you do that, Dim? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> So let me try and walk us through this in a crawl, walk, run fashion. First, we need to figure out what are the groups that we actually use today and who is in them. 
So uh, curiously, I am not owner of all the groups, but I think either you, Aaron, or you, Dims, are owners in all the groups, uh, or Ehor is. Um, you three are the sort of template. I've been, whenever I create groups, I've been removing myself, um, which actually sort of bit me in the butt this morning. But uh, so you three should be able to look at your groups and find everything that starts with Kate's infra. Okay. I think How, we started all the groups with Kate's infra. Uh, yeah, Aaron uh, assigned me uh, to work with uh, Christoph to come up with the command lines. We might as well. Uh, I'll sign myself up for that also. Right. So okay. if we have then, if we now have a command line that uh, a select group of people can use to create and bootstrap a new group, uh, that's a huge first step uh, that we can use because we're going to want we're going to end up creating dozens and dozens of these groups for all the different stagings and all the different namespaces and everything else. So let's make that as streamlined as possible. So, uh, so just so I'm clear, I feel like step one is, do we make sure we know what groups we have manually created in Google Groups? And yes. that will be Dims, I guess, and myself to go. I can also look at all the IAM rules and see which groups have been granted IAM access. And apparently those are the only ones that really matter, so. Okay. I have that list, Adam, don't worry. Okay. So I feel like I would like for us to start with PRing that list somewhere into this repo so we know what that list is. And then okay. the next step would be, uh, I have an issue with Dims and Christoph assigned to take a look at the use of APIs to, I guess, recreate those groups in yep. G Suite. Okay. Um, well, so the, the question is, like, we can do it one time and just create them, move all the people who are in the existing groups to the new groups. Fortunately, there's not that many. Um, and just do it one time and eat the pain. We can then talk about, should we have this be YAML and reconciled actively somewhere, right? Like the rest of our GCP infrastructure is not reconciled YAML yet, um, but probably should be over time. I'm gonna say this sort of what we, we've done with DNS where like it's not fully GitOps driven, right? But at least somebody can run a command you based on some files to reconcile things. I think we're trying to get to that first step here. With right. Today we have scripts, and if you run the script, it will reconcile everything. And the scripts are written in a way that they're supposed to reconcile. Uh, right. And it's not ideal, but you know anybody who is questioning the state of the world should be able to log in. I'm working on a rec on a ensure everything script, which just calls all of them in sequence, uh, and should be able to just say ensure everything, and it will. Make sure the groups exist, make sure the billing accounts are set properly, make sure the buckets exist and have the right permissions and policies. Technically it doesn't, technically it only makes the changes it can make. Yes. Right, so it doesn't tell you if it can't be reconciled. That's right, and it's only one directional reconciliation. It's not deleting buckets that shouldn't exist. Right. right. Uh, okay, uh, so next in this area, we talked about dumping all of the IAM roles. Uh, Hippie, this is assigned to you. I feel like you outputted a bunch of stuff here and you showed us a commit. Are the actual scripts living, breathing things that exist in our repo? The scripts are in the PR. Uh, we haven't merged this yet. Um, I probably need to address the two things. Yeah, there were a couple of to-dos left in there, right? Okay, so I couldn't quite find the PR. If you can link the PR to the CFC, that'll let us know that the script itself exists. Sure. Okay. Uh, maybe also related to the scripts, there was something about setting up a group with just the audit permissions necessary to use these scripts. Is this, has that this been done have, already? That is done. We have an auditor's group. Okay. Um, and then we had talked about setting this up as a uh, Kubernetes job and then later as a cron job. Uh, what would, so would the cron job end up like dumping the output to a log? Would it dump it to the repo? What's the repetitious part of this? I think the cron job would create a pull request or something. I was actually in the midst of creating the, the pull request. Um, you can see a couple of the commits against the current uh, pull request and, and are generated by a bot. Okay. 
um, I feel like a model we could follow is uh, Prow at the moment uh, opens up a pull request to auto update itself. And if it finds that there is already a pull request doing that, it just force pushes to that uh, branch so that there's only ever one like bot automated PR to update things, but it's still oh, nice. it's human review. That's great. And then we can make sure that that PR gets appropriate priority in everybody's mailboxes. <laughs> yeah. P0, unlike all the other P0. Once we figure out what it is, then I'll, I'll add a new big red label to make it different okay. from all the other big red labels. Those are all of the things I uh, understand us to like really care about before we open the gates. However, I've heard Tim use the phrase "are back" a lot. Yes. I think missing from this list before we, oh, well, again, it's which gate. If we're talking about all the gates, I think we do not have a script that turns on a GKE cluster yet. Right. Um, so we do not have a, an, and that script will need to include the basic RBAC enablement, the same way as our sort of template groups have some basic permissions. We need to have basic permissions for a cluster. Um, we have, we have no script yet. We have clusters that we can use to base the template off of, but we have not written that script. Right. So I guess my question is like, uh, does, does the RBAC stuff get tied to the IAM stuff at all or is yes. it separate? Yes. It does. Yes. Okay. So we'll have like a group that is, uh, cluster editors or, and those people will be able to own the cluster and we'll have an example of creating a namespace which has our back for a particular group that can access the namespace, right? We can do, group, we can do Google Groups to IAM now, right? You mean we use the same groups in IAM and RBAC? Yeah. Okay, we're not gonna like integrate the IAM and RBAC. No, no, no. We'll, but we'll use, right. we'll have a group, the same way we're using groups to control IAM, yes. we'll use groups to control IAM. The same groups. Yes. But they are both consuming the same source. There's no. That's right. The third leg of the triangle is not there. So the RBAC, the RBAC roles would be based off of the Google groups. They would not be based off of the IAM roles. That's right. We're not adding service accounts for people. We're just going to add them to Google groups. And you can use Google groups straight from RBAC roles now, right? Okay, uh, so I'm gonna tag this as both an access issue and a cluster management issue. You spelled access wrong. See, this is why I love doing this live. Uh, and I will assign it to you, Tim. That's uh, great. Since this is about why, well, I don't know why Patch Release Team is coming That's great. That's cool. Between Justin and I, we will tackle this as our next big thing now that uh, we've got the other stuff that I'm sure Justin is eager to talk about. Okay. Uh, so just to uh, really walk through it, um, I feel like there's an umbrella issue to create the cluster. Uh, there's all sorts of detailed things and uh, aspirational things in here. I feel like I want to shut this issue down when we feel like we have successfully burned down the manually created cluster and have recreated a new cluster from scratch. So I have an issue open assigned to uh, you, Tim, and Justin, since you guys said you were gonna work on this last time, and if he has uh, expressed interest in maybe shoulder surfing if you get together to do this. Yes, I really, really wanted to have this done, but I forgot about the cap deadline, so. Uh, that's, that's all good. Uh, so just, I also wanted to enumerate, when we talk about burning it down and standing it back up, do I have, so we talked about uh, our back policies, uh, we'd be standing up nodes with basically the same configuration. Would we yeah. also be ensuring that all of the manually running infra is also stood back up? And certificates come across as well. That's right. So basically everything that's currently running in the non-production non production clusters uh, needs to be recreated. So it, the, the process may actually be turn up the new one and then burn down the old one, depending on how important we think the promoter is and how long we think it'll take. Um, but I would I would advocate that we write the script, and once we're happy with the script, then we do the burn down and turn up, right? So we'll be bringing up yet another cluster sort of in parallel while we make sure the script is iterating the way we want it to. Um, so I feel, I just feel compelled to point out, I, I, I feel like we have arrived at this exact situation where it's on you, Tim, and Justin, and we'll get it done in two weeks, and then nothing has happened. For those community members who are frustrated about this, 
and would like to see us move forward, is there any way that they could contribute or help out or even do the work themselves? I, I think we need to figure out how we are going to manage Kubernetes clusters. Well, okay, yes. So we let me let me put your question uh, on the stack for just one second and address their, uh, Justin's. Um, yes, we we know we need clusters, plural. Um, I think it's fair for us to start with cluster singular sure. in that that's what we're running from today. Um, and so just figuring out how do we turn that cluster on automatically, applying all the current best practices and all of the security knobs that are non-default uh, through the various GKE APIs and whatever um, is really what I think is the long pole. So if somebody is eager to help with that, I'm totally cool if somebody wants to start putting together a script and trawling through all of the, the various security related knobs. GKE has a lot of knobs uh, as things transition from, you know, old ways to new secure, secure ways. Um, I don't know what all those knobs are, honestly. You want it in back. Well, I mean, that's what we have for all these other scripts today. And I think it's the shortest path to something deliverable. I'm happy to go. I'd love to help contribute to that. Okay, so uh, I'm, I would be happy to, was that happy? Sorry, I didn't see. Yeah, yeah that was me. Um, I would be happy to give you project editor access to the, the project, uh, or we could spin up a, like a, a test project, honestly, just for prototyping. Um, and uh, if, if you wanna iterate on that script, I don't know if you've got even a start of the script, Justin, or if you just wanna look at the clusters that we've already got, or even just go with fresh eyes and like, let's look at what the various knobs that G Cloud offers. We haven't really seen any real options on there yet. Okay. Um, the obvious ones, like disabling certificates. Or right. right, so like, I know there's a bunch of knobs in the UI that are check boxes that have big warnings that say, this, would, this is on by default for compatibility reasons, but will be off as of some date in the future. Um, I don't know what the equivalent G Cloud flags are for all of those. Right. This just seems hilariously like a place where the community could help us out. Like we don't actually know how to use our own cluster <laughs> tool to manage our own cluster. We know how to use it. I just never use the command line tool because the UI is so big. <laughs> um, I love this stuff. It, it, uh, it delights me to, to do that, those type of things. Okay. I think it's great. Um, and uh, yes, Justin and I have been having an ongoing discussion about whether it should be a Go program that turns this on via the API or just calling G Cloud through Shell. Um, my, yeah, preference has been, my preference has just been like do the simplest possible thing, which is to call G Cloud, which is already effectively debugged. I agree with you, the simplest possible thing, but I believe that to be Go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as I told you guys last time, we're using Haskell. It's the, it's the end of that discussion. So, uh, I uh, think whatever gets us there soonest and whatever the community as a whole is willing to maintain. That's right. Uh, um, and so turning the cluster on is, is step one and then making sure that we have uh, just a comprehension of what we want the default permissions to be, like which Google group specifically are we going to give admin access to the cluster? Like, I don't think we have a group for that yet, so we'll have to create the group, figure out the naming of it, and of course, naming things is hard. We've already screwed up a whole bunch of group names, and so I can't wait to rename them. Um, and uh, just, it's all those little details tying them together. So Hippie, if you wanna help with that, uh, I am, Yes, I have been in the way. I'm happy to uh, give you access. Looks like Arno is willing to help out as well. Uh, would any, so my impression is what would help iterate here is their ability to like run the script and see the cluster come up and then compare whether the cluster that came up looks roughly like what the manual cluster looks like, which means- Yep, so here's, here's what I'll do. Um, I don't know Arno's uh, email. Uh, I think I have Hippie's email in various other places. So. Um, I will create a, I'll just create a, a, a test project and we can, and I will add you guys as project editor to that project and you guys can go nuts iterating on turning up the, the cluster and then we can compare notes. Awesome. So uh, Arno, can you uh, send me your email so I can add you to a group, uh, send it to me by Slack or something? Or if you can put your GitHub username, I can assign you to this issue as well. But I need an email to put you in a group. Ah, well, that is also helpful. Yes. Okay. 
so I feel like that will get us some amount of progress in the next two weeks. Uh, hopefully, so just again, to refresh, the manually cl created cluster that we saw was temporary and we would tear down in 90 days still lives and is still where our infrastructure is running today. Uh, yes, so most of it has moved to cluster two, but uh, yes, it is still there. The One of the promoters is still in cluster one. Okay, and cluster two was also manually created? It was also created using the most efficient way I knew, which was to write a Go program. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right. That's One quick cluster thing minute. before we move on from that is to the ability to um, access the current cluster to see to, to compare um, once we bring up the new one. So we're in this new project, but if we don't have visibility into the old project to see how the cluster, like what it looks like, I won't be able to make sure it's the same shape. I can certainly share the YAML I used to create the clusters. Yeah, that, that should be sufficient. I, honestly, I don't think there's that much that's interesting there. Okay. Um, it's more like, look at all the knobs that are there and let's talk about what value we should set to each of them. Yes, and I, th I was gotcha. trying to find, I thought there was some support in gcloud for applying a configuration without individual commands for GK, but I can't find it right now. Okay. Okay, next, billing. Uh, so we had a task for Justin to show us Data Studio. Justin, you did that. Hooray. Um, our next steps are to figure out what actual data we want from Data Studio. What are the queries we want? Uh, we talked about that being uh, either per namespace billing um, and then storage analysis. I feel like we should rephrase this to maybe be like per bucket billing. Does that sound fair? Or uh, it's either per bucket or per project. project. I mean, well, it's probably going to be per path. So if I'm going to jump the gun, but we're probably going to have, we're going to have storage gigabytes at rest built, and we're also going to have bandwidth delivered. Egress, yeah. And the bandwidth delivered is going to be the bigger number. And that will be, if we're all going to share one prod bucket where we're again jumping the gun, that will be a per two levels directory or per directory structure, per preface. Yeah, I don't know what the billing data they give you for GCS serving is. I, I don't know how granular. So I guess the action item is really to explore that and figure out if one bucket is actually the right answer or not. From the billing point of view. Yeah. Yes. So let's see what we can get. Yes, to figure out what we can get. So we'll have to throw some test data in and throw some, load, some artificial load at it. And because just, we, we do want it per Kubernetes subprojects. Like if we, give, we turn on COPS and we turn on uh, cluster API, we want to know how much is COPS bandwidth costing us versus cluster API bandwidth. I presume. Uh, I presume so. Yes. Or don't care. I mean, the un unfortunately, GCR today does not give us that breakdown, right? So if we can do better with GCS, then exactly. Bonzo, let's do that. Um, so we'll, we'll take the action then to just throw some test data in with some prefixes that we think look vaguely realistic and throw some artificial load at it and download test data, it. artificial load, put it live. Download it a thousand times and see if we can run up a bill. A billion times. <laughs> just enough um, to trigger a bill that's not zero or $13 trillion. Okay. Um, I have asked a bunch of questions in this issue to basically express that it sounds like we have, we, will, we need to figure out what level of granularity we want. I think Justin, you articulated well, that we care about bandwidth delivered and storage at rest and how do we shard that appropriately. I right. think this project is some way to shard it by sub project, uh, is sub project rolling up to SIG is probably what I care about. Um, okay. Uh, then we'll answer. We'll ask some questions about per namespace billing. Uh, Tim, can I give that to you? It sounded like you or somebody needed to ask some. Uh, questions. Yes, though this will serialize obviously behind the clusters. No, I guess it doesn't have to. We can play with the existing test clusters. Okay, sign it to me. I think it's basically we're trying to ask: Is per namespace billing even possible? Uh, it is possible. I'm not sure what the time frame for it is or how it integrates with the rest of the billing data. I have just not used it myself. Okay. But isn't the uh, latest um, advanced version of GKE on uh, Gcloud uh, basically um, having namespace-based bill billing? 
Yes, but I don't know how it integrates with the rest of the billing data. Like, I, I, it, it is entirely likely that the team has done a great job and it just integrates seamlessly. I haven't played with it myself. Okay, just check. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I guess the other bit. Yes. Also, remember, we're, we, we're, we have access to information about future stuff that I have to be careful about. Yes. No, I, <clears throat> I understand. Like, I didn't uh, okay. that, so, okay. <laughs> Uh, so I feel like I will close the present data studio thing. I will open up some issues for some of the follow-up ideas we discussed. Um, and we'll call the umbrella issue closed when we feel like we are content with billing to be able to open gates for certain things. To me, it seems an awful lot like the storage question defines when we open the gate for a bunch of sub-project related artifacts. I feel like that's also probably gated behind the use of G Suite to effectively manage all of our IAM roles, uh, but it could be like just to get a cluster up and running and get and make sure we are repeatedly reusing it and running stuff on it. Maybe we don't necessarily need super granular billing. Yes. Any any other words on billing? Okay. Uh, so the the area that I'm least informed on right now and I'm actually gonna drop the milestone is all related to artifacts that we store. The things I have in the milestone right now are the image promotion process. Uh, seems like we want that, we wanna prove that that actually works. Um, Linus has basically said that it is good to go. We just need somebody to open up a PR and go through the process. So Linus has said that it works and he thinks it's in a demoable state. He has done demos himself. Um, the question is, are we comfortable? It doesn't have what I would call a lot of testing uh, in terms of like integration or end to end testing yet. We've set up the end to end test project so that he can do that work. To the best of my knowledge, that work is not done yet. Are we comfortable turning this thing on live without that level of testing? Um, given A, it's sort of already live on the internal version, uh, and B, the results of it going haywire could be catastrophic. The results of it going haywire only if we cut over the serving, the serving name. Yes. We can turn it on without cutting over the serving yes, name. Yes, so, right, Justin's absolutely right. We can do demonstrations of it, but we're not gonna have the kates.gcr.io well, facade. One of the things we could do, I think he also wrote the dump from a GCR repo to a text file. Yes. So we could turn it on in repo two and then dump golden repo and repo two and see that they are the same. I don't think I followed you, but there's, there's various steps we can do before we turn it on and flip the facade over. Before we cut it over, I'm saying we should run that dumper and make sure that the two GCR repos oh, are identical. Uh, sure, yes, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, it, my concern is that there's some net new code here. It wasn't just an open source port from the internal. So, uh, and you know, the results of that going bad could be bad. So I just want to make sure we have appropriate safeguards in place before we flip that over. And okay. I've spoken to Linus about this before and he agrees. So, so he's not here, but in absentia, he, he's okay. All right, I think I have expressed Tim's concerns here to describe that we still feel any, like there's more work to actually flip the switch. I was yes. gonna say, are there any new repos, new projects that we could like, come we on? We talked about wanting to use this just for core mm -hmm. Kubernetes components, like uh -huh. the right before we thought about using this for other sub projects who want to store their uh, container images. Yeah, I mean, we have this vanity name for kates.gcr.io. Uh, if we want sub projects to have different vanity names, that might be okay, but that would be different. Re like, we haven't crossed that territory yet. And so the thought was anything that currently lives in kates.gcr.io, we want to move that stuff over first. So that'd be all the images that. Um, that make up Kubernetes, all of the like test images that Kubernetes, Kubernetes uses to test its way of running end-to-end tests, things like that. 
That's right. Basically, anything that does a Docker pull in any of our core, any of the repos that feed into the release is, is there. Uh, so then, Justin, you have all sorts of stuff related to artifact storage in general that's beyond just GCR.io that I don't really know how to adequately bucket because uh, I feel like we have a lot of vague umbrella sounding issues. And um, I want to understand in terms of what, what do we think of opening the gates in the context of like the artifact server and redirector and all of that stuff. We, we do have a plan to do an MVP. Uh, so we're the, we are not going to create a initially going to create a redirector service that is smart. We're just going to prototype it with GCLB. Uh, Tim, thank you, Tim, for merging some PRs and we have created GCS buckets. I believe for all the staging repos. For all the staging repos and, every prod. and we have created a single GCS bucket for prod. And I believe we have mostly created a GCLB in front of that. Uh, we haven't done the name, the DNS name. Right. But if we like artifacts.case.io, we can point that name to it and it should be live when we do that. And then I have also created a PR against the image promoter to do binary artifact promotion, which I will ping Linus about soonish. And then uh, if we like the idea of promoting non-image artifacts using the same image promoter, then we can, we can do it that way. And that should... What we don't have yet is a globalized story there, whereas GCR will automatically send you to the geo-replicated GCR repo. This does not. So I think we need to think about that. Well, we yes, and what we believe is we believe that GCLB will have points of presence globally, yes. but it will go to a, it was backed by a GCS bucket that is located in multiple regions that are all in the US, multiple That's zones correct. that are all in the US. That's correct. Um, so users won't notice it in uh, Asia, for example, but they will presumably see slightly increased latency and we may or may not see increased transport costs. That's right. And, so this, if, and if the US disappeared, Asia would go offline. That's right. So I think the billing step is the first part. If we can get visibility into that, we can see how much it actually matters. Um, and then uh, we can figure out if there's a story there that we can put together. Uh, so Justin, when you reference uh, the MVP, I'm looking at this uh, issue and enhancements talking about milestone zero MVP. Is this what you were talking about? Yes, and I think we've basically done that uh, We've done that and we have a PR for, I think I described in that that we would manually promote, but uh, we have a PR for, uh, for automatic promotion, which is not yet merged. Okay. All right. Um, I feel like I'm going to try and take some of these broader, like set up a GCR repo and set up a GCS bucket to try and describe it in terms of GCS buckets for use with the MVP uh, versus like GCS buckets for everybody. I don't, I don't think we're doing that. I feel like the GCS bucket issue I could consider closed when I feel like we have done enough GCS set up for your MVP, which I feel like we have. I just need to describe it. And the GCR stuff we're going to consider closed because we already have all the repos in place for container image promoter to do its thing. I believe so. Tim, we have the repos needed for container image promoter. The uh, GCR repos. <laughs> All the repos are in place. So yeah. Linus, like we can do a demo of it today. Uh, I'm pretty sure. We just don't have the testing in place. Okay. That's the, really the only thing that's gating me uh, from saying, let's start the bulk conversion process. Also, we should define a conversion protocol of like, I don't know how long it's gonna take to the bulk import. It might be fast, it might be slow. There's a, apparently there's a backside copy that maybe we can use. Um, but if it takes a day, we have to make sure that nobody pushes anything for a day. Or, or, we, do, or, do, a, yeah. or we do a catch up pass, right? Okay. Um, then Dims, there's something here about registry mirroring and attestation or container images for the project. 
also Justin and Brendan Burns's name are mentioned. Yeah, I think this was something which we need to figure out, which is, I, I don't think this is MVP, and I don't think that's its initial, which is like, so how, do, how does anyone know that the image that we're talking about is the image that we say it is? And I don't think we're ready to talk about this. I don't think we're ready to tackle this yet. Um, okay. I'm and getting now we're relying on, SS, on TLS effectively. We need a backlog milestone. <laughs> yeah, so I will leave it deep milestone. I will create a, a like nice to have. But I feel like there's something beyond all of the tests that's like just nice to have. So I'll put it in there, but that's why I'm leaving it milestone list. And I will go ahead and add these two to the ready to migrate milestone to remind me to break them up appropriately. Um, Okay, other thing I wanted to talk to this group about real quick was uh, Docker Hub. Uh, so I uh, gracefully accepted credentials to Docker Hub from Tim. I noticed we had all of these images. They haven't updated in forever. Um, I think the recent security breach amply demonstrated why we don't want to be on Docker Hub anymore. So I removed our presence entirely and waited for the whales of discontent. And then I think I bumped into one. Uh, somebody said, like, I broke their testing. Uh, specifically, they used OpenShift 3.10 and it had, it couldn't pull down the Kubernetes slash pause container. Um, and so now I am chasing down currently in back channels, but I'll start to surface it. Uh, just where is Kubernetes pause hard coded? Uh, how, what downstream projects does this affect? What are their support windows and what reasonable guarantees can we make? It seems like it, we may not have actually busted uh, certainly at like OpenShift proper. I don't think we, but they haven't had Kubernetes pause in their core code since uh, one nine, uh, but it looks like we didn't actually fully excise that pause container from our test code until October, 2018. Uh, so conceivably we have some backporting to do. Uh, so I feel like I might have to keep the stupid Docker Hub account around long enough for us to get rid of all references to the pause container. Yeah, you know, if, if pause is the only one there, that's a pretty reasonable situation. Um, especially if maybe we just push a new one up there to make sure that it hasn't been compromised. We've already changed all the credentials. Well, they, we can check the SHA hasn't changed. So if we, we have, if we know what the SHA was. Docker does tell you when it was last updated. I presume if it's compromised, I'm not trusting anything. Does yeah, the thing is I restored, I restored what was there before. So I could have restored a compromised pause thing. I mean, the Docker Hub UI told me that it hadn't been updated in over three years. So yeah. That. But yeah, we could push up a fresh pause container. I just want to be very clear and explicit. If I do that, then that this is not about maintaining that pause container. It's about putting in a, a stopgap measure for those people who can't get off of it. Just That's yet. right. Um, so and honestly, I, pause might be the only one. Everything else is, is really ancient. Pause probably has not honestly been updated in three years. Um, there was okay. one more image in documentation and that was easy to replace with something else. Okay. Thank you for uh, doing that, Aaron. Yeah, so does, do, do people like that structure of running through the milestones and stuff? My thought was to next time, make sure that our project board actually has all of these, has just the current milestone if people start adding new issues or other stuff, I will punt them to other milestones as appropriate. And if we have time, we can get to those. But so for example, you notice we haven't talked about the go.cates.io replacement. We haven't talked about the redirector, the, the Nginx based redirector being something else because I agree those are great, but we really should be focused on unblocking and yep. opening the gates. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. Uh, okay, the only thing we didn't cover, but just so you know, I started taking inventory of all of the cluster-based infrastructure that we originally pulled together in that doc. I now actually know what clusters they live in. Uh, so if you have a chance, take a look at this and see if anything is missing from this. I also have a separate issue to go through all of the Google projects that are used to capture non-cluster-based infrastructure. Uh, so things like 
BigQuery are probably the main things I'm thinking of, but also what are all of the like GCS buckets that we're dumping all of the test artifacts in, things like that. Okay. That's all that I have. Awesome. And we're, we're also at time. Thank you for um, getting ring kicked. Yep. Okay. So if you have AIs, they're assigned to you. See you in two weeks. Thank Bye. you, Aaron. Yep. Thank you, everybody. One click.